Then I went again. Well, he said the you know, spiritual dimension. The money should come with time. How precious somehow. I'm important in the world. You have a family. Everyone else was a star. In 1972, Elliot Lasky was a student at State University of New York at Buffalo. I grew up from, went to yeshivas, kept Shabbos, and at the age of 18, as many people uh, back in the 60s started having questions and totally left uh, the derech. Back in 1972, I was on a a uh, concert tour with the Rolling Stones uh, on uh, their American tour. It was a two-month summer tour. Uh, I was 24 years old at the time, and uh, not exactly a spiritual uh, experience, let's say. But uh, several months later after that tour, I had a friend contact me from California that just came to New York through France. Uh, he was a Zen Buddhist, not Jewish. I was in the house of a very close friend of mine. His name was Chip Monk, who was uh, the staging and lighting manager for the Rolling Stones. And meanwhile, my friend is uh, laying this whole Zen Buddhist outline to me, and it sounded very interesting. And for some reason, spiritually, I awakened. And I'm asking myself, how can Yiddishkeit be right and the whole world wrong? That was the question that kept on percolating in my mind. And uh, I had a close relationship with Rabbi Gerari, who was the shliach in Buffalo. At the time, I was in the University of Buffalo, even though I was taking time off uh, for the music in industry. Um, and I called him. And I started sharing some of the questions with him. I was in New York at the time. And he said, there's only one person that could help you, and that's the Lubavitcher Rebbe. He gave me an address, take, uh, go to 770 Eastern Parkway, meet my brother-in-law, I believe his name was Yossi Hendel. Uh, you seek him out, and you come exactly at this time. It was a, a bitter cold winter day in January of 1973. Um, You'll meet my brother-in-law, and the Rebbe will be going. He's coming from the oil to Daven Mincha, and he'll come out in front of 770, and maybe you'll have an opportunity to talk to him. And um, the, I'll try to paint a picture of what I looked like at the time. I'm wearing snakeskin boot, boots and tight jeans, a leather jacket, no gray, not in my beard, not in my very long hair. There was shoulder length at the time. I'm waiting outside, and I saw an old limousine uh, pull up, and uh, I remember Yossi moved back away from me, and uh, distinguished Rav comes out of the car, and I go over and approach uh, the Lubavitcher Rebbe. And Yiddish is my first language, as I said earlier, and uh, I stopped him right in front of the steps of 770. I went over to him. And in Yiddish, and I learned Yiddish at home, so there's going to be some grammatical and, and uh, errors in it, but I uh, stopped the Rebbe and said, Um Chuldik, instead the Lubavitcher Rebbe. Excuse me, are you the Lubavitcher Rebbe? Our eyes lock. I never in my life saw eyes. <laughs> I never saw eyes like the Rebbe's eyes before. And he didn't say, yes, I am the Rebbe. He didn't say no. He said, Vosid Lainaman, I'm from Vanad Minter. What is your name and where are you from? I give him my name, tell him where I'm from, where my parents are from. And I said, I have a question. He says, Freg, ask. And I ask him, and our eyes are locked. It's... Uh, all of a sudden, it's like there's nothing around us, just the two of us. It was an incredibly spiritual experience for me. And I asked him, Avu is God. Where is God? And the Rebbe answers me, Umetum, every place. I said, Ich weiß. 
I know. Abedavu, but where? And he again, answers again. In Yiddish, we're talking. Umitum in us, in everything, in every place. In a bame, in a tree, in a stain, in a stone. I'm quoting word for word. And I say to the Rebbe, Yichveis, Abedavu, I know but where? And he said something that really blew me away, so to speak. He said, in thine hearts, eptos is videflex, in your heart, if this is how you're asking. I found that it would be difficult to express myself in philosophical terms in Yiddish. I asked him if I can switch to English, and he said, speak in English. And our eyes are still totally locked. I felt like we were transported to another time, to another place, really transcending the physical towns. And I asked them, isn't it when we say, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Alokeinu, Hashem Echot, whether you are a Jew or a black man or an Indian, there's only one God for all of us. And the Rebbe answered, the essence of the black man is to be what he is as a black man. And the essence of the Indian is to be what he is as an Indian. And the essence of the Jew is tied to Hashem Yisbarach through Torah and mitzvahs. And those, for me, was very, very powerful words. We spoke for approximately 15 minutes on the steps of 770 in a very, very bitter, cold day in January, and he gave me two things to do. One, to learn the Kitz HaShulchan Aruch in English, and the other, to start putting on tefillin. The Rebbe went on. I guess I must have kept him from Mincha, and uh, I went back to my friend's place. Um, I didn't change the next day. I didn't change two, three weeks later. But about two, three months down the line, I started putting on film, which I had not put on for several years. From that day till today, I've never missed. And as they say, mitzvah, gereris mitzvah, one mitzvah leads to another mitzvah. Baruch Hashem, today I have uh, four beautiful children, all of them in Derech Hashem.